Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand hot electron effect or hot Courier effect. In the previous clip, we have seen a few short channel effects, velocity saturation, mobility degradation, and so on and so forth. In this clip, we are going to focus our attention to understand what is hot electron effect or hot Courier effect. We know that there are two electric fields in MOSFET. One is E-lateral. We have seen that which is given by VDS by L drain to source voltage upon the length of the channel and the other one is E vertical which is given by VGS by TOX. Now we have also seen scaling and two different types of scaling constant field scaling and constant voltage scaling. We saw its advantages disadvantages for both of them. Now let's presume that we have done constant voltage scaling means my voltages are not scaled down whereas all my other dimensions or features are scaled down except for the voltages. If that happens let's see what's happening for E-lateral. E-lateral because VDS is not scaled down is going to be VDS upon L dash which is L by S because of the scaling L dash is equal to L by S and that shows that E lateral will increase. We also know that when my VDS is greater than VDSAT, my channel is pinched off and if I keep on increasing my VG VDS further, my channel keeps on shifting towards the left in saturation region, correct? Shifts towards the left. That means my channel length is effectively reduced. So length is reduced here further. This also will lead to an increase in E lateral. So what we are trying to understand here is that presuming that our transistor is operating in the saturation region, we have deployed a voltage scaling, constant voltage scaling technique in which my voltages are not scaled down. We see that our E lateral, which is VDS by L increases. In this case, technically as VDS is increasing, length is getting reduced. So the factor might get even out but because length is scaled down by a factor of s, E lateral still increases and VDS is kept constant it's not scaled down. Now in the previous clip we have also seen that the drift velocity is given by mobility into E lateral. We have seen this while we study velocity saturation. This tells me that as E lateral keeps on increasing, my drift velocity of my electrons will keep on increasing. Now when the velocity of the electrons is increased means well the electrons are moving with very high velocity we know that the kinetic energy is directly proportional to velocity. So my kinetic energy of this electrons or this carriers would increase drastically. When the kinetic energy of this electrons increase drastically what's going to happen is they will become hot and hence this electrons are called as hot electrons. So let's understand quickly. Let's recap what I just said. When VDS is increasing, my E lateral is increasing. When I say E lateral is increasing, the electric field towards the drain is increasing. When the electric field towards the drain is increasing, we just said that my velocity increases, drift velocity. We also saw the relation that VD was equal to mu into E lateral. So drift velocity increase. We know that drift velocity is directly proportional to kinetic energy. Correct? We have done this in our lower classes, right? So when velocity increases, kinetic energy tends to increase and this kinetic energy with which the electrons are moving will make the electrons quite hot because it's a huge kinetic energy and these are nothing but hot electrons. Now what is happening is this hot electrons are moving towards the drain with a very high energy because the electric field towards the drain is high and they will undergo a phenomena at this point at the juncture or at the interface a phenomena called as impact ionization. Let's understand what is impact ionization. Why I have taken this specific point here is because the electric field would be highest at that particular point. 